Hey folks, welcome back to the Beer Wrench Garage, and today it's going to be another classic Beer Wrench video. Uh, we're going to have ourselves a beer a couple, and we're going to do the uh, initial oil change, the uh, break-in oil change for my new 2024 uh, Subaru WRX. So the car has about 530, 40 miles on it right now, and obviously per the book, it's not due for an oil change for, you know, five or 6,000 miles. But... Uh, on a brand new engine, you have metal components that are meshing together for the first time, bearings and rods and pistons. And so uh, obviously they're going to wear in a little bit. And as they wear in, um, they're going to leave uh, debris, basically. So there's going to be a very high level in, in relation to future oil changes of uh, metal debris in, in this oil. Now, the theory behind doing a break in oil change is removing that from the engine and putting fresh oil in so that debris oil doesn't, doesn't continue to cycle through the engine. Does it really matter? I think it does. Uh, super engineers and really car manufacturer engineers in general just don't call for that. I think the reason they don't call for that is because it, a new car buyer, the average public, it's going to be like a pain in the butt. You're not going to want to do it. But I do think there's a good argument and good logic to doing it. And because the cost of doing it is so cheap uh, and the fact that I, I do drive my cars hard. Uh, so I figure I'd give my engine the best possible uh, chance at a good, healthy life. And so that's what we're going to do. So in this case, I'm gonna, it's 500 miles. I think uh, it's a good enough period where the vehicle has been driven at different conditions, highway, city, uh, in between. Uh, and so uh, it should have a decent amount of break-in. And then we're going to use our friends at Blackstone uh, Laboratories to analyze the oil. So um, by the end of this video, this will be back. It'll probably be a couple of weeks for me, probably a couple minutes for you. And we'll go over the data on, the, the data on this. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what we see because I know these numbers are going to be elevated. And I've seen one or two other oil analyses for break-in oil changes or newer oil changes on these motors. So it'll be interesting to compare that. Otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and get on this and I'll show you what that looks like. So we're literally gonna give it a minute to warm up. Uh, I did go out and get the oil earlier, so the car is pretty warm, but you know, you, you do want to have like a relatively warm engine to get that uh, oil nice and warm before draining. So literally gonna give it a minute. All right, folks. So I don't know if you can see at this angle you're at, but I'll bring in after we close it up. But we got ourselves a uh, 17 millimeter drain plug and we'll go ahead and knock that loose. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fresh oil. You can just tell it looks great. I almost feel like I shouldn't uh, drop this oil, but We'll go ahead and do it. Oh, Holy cow, that's a lot of oil. Or a big volume of oil. That looks great. I hope, I hope the camera's picking this up, but we'll go ahead and get our sample. Wow. So yeah, that's 500 uh, plus miles on the factory fill and it looks phenomenal. Um, I'm of two minds with the crash washer. I don't really think cars or drain bolts need crash washers, but I'll put it on, on in this case because the Japanese cars seem to be really, really adamant about that. So we'll do that. We'll get the crash washer on and then the torque spec for this bolt is 31 foot pounds and if we can get that little 31 on there we'll go ahead and do that oh it's going to be a little bit hard 31. nice all right so let's put this on let's put that filter on no big deal Hey folks, so one really interesting that I thing that I did see with um, the oil filter here after I removed it, it just spins off. Uh, you can clearly see some debris here. I don't know if that's normal and every oil change will have some of that or if this is kind of what we're talking about with the uh, break-in uh, material. But uh, 
you know if you've had one of these engines and one of these cars for a while and and uh this is normal let me know or if this is an anomaly also let me know leave a comment but uh certainly um it won't hurt to have this brake and oil change done well folks there she goes first oil change on zero seven twenty seven yeah zero seven twenty seven twenty four at five hundred thirty two point two miles all right so what i will do is finish off this beer maybe have a couple more and send this off to blackstone what I'll ask you guys to do is wait another few seconds and we'll fast forward into the future a couple weeks, maybe three weeks. And then I'll tell you what is in this little bottle as far as metals and contaminants and substances of that nature. All right, folks, this is future me back with some oil samples, um, oil sample data. I'm drinking a uh, Hoogarten today. I'm not sure uh, what this is, it's some kind of Euro beer. And it's the first time I've had it on the channel. But let's get into the oil. So this is mine from my uh, FA24 Subaru engine. And uh, my um, sample had about 532 miles on it. Blackstone got confused and put 352, but it doesn't matter. So I'll put this up so you guys can see. I'm not going to read the uh, little narrative paragraph. It basically just says, um, hey, this looks plenty like braking uh, oil, nothing to be super concerned about, but I uh, just want to point out some of these uh, really elevated uh, 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 elements or uh, substances. Aluminum, uh, six parts per million in the sample, four parts per million for the universal averages, nothing crazy. Aluminum typically is found in like pistons or maybe bearings. And uh, this is actually an interesting little... Uh, chart i guess or, or graph no it's a chart that shows the different types of metals that you'll find in oil analysis and what their sources are so let me, i'll put that up there as well so you guys can see excuse me and refer to it <clears throat> so uh, aluminum and then iron iron was three times the amount that you would see in a regular uh, oil sample iron typically comes from like uh like uh, probably like a crank or cam metal components in there again elevated but what you'd expect to see in a factory fill copper was through the roof uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that is like 20 times normal uh, copper is typically from bearings bearing material and again uh, this is the first time a lot of these components are touching each other so you see a lot of uh, debris and last thing that was interesting is zinc. Zinc was a lot higher or substantially higher than it would be in a uh, normal um, oil change analysis. And that gives credence to the fact that perhaps uh, Subaru uses high zinc factory fill oil. Uh, zinc is a uh, metal or zinc is a substance that reduces friction or reduces wear on metal components and high Z oil is desired and folks say the reason you shouldn't do uh break in oil changes is uh to so you don't remove the high z oil out of there out of the engine uh that remains to be seen but i wanted to compare my oil change analysis to one that uh another subaru owner by the name of william did and posted on the uh wrx groups on facebook his car had seven thousand miles on it and he did his oil uh, analysis uh, after 3,000 miles of this oil, which he was running the Idemitsu 5W30, which is supposed to be a high quality oil that many of these uh, our Subaru owners step up to. So I'll put this up here as well. You can take a look at both the uh, Blackstone narrative paragraph and then the, the data here. Uh, even with a 7,000 mile engine, you can still see that copper is elevated. It's like, shoot uh probably about two times more than two times normal and so even at that 7,000 miles it's still wearing in um and then the other really thing of note is uh zinc is really high which is good at 883 parts per million for that idemitsu oil so for those of you that are looking at idemitsu oil uh, it does seem like it is quality oil but 
Uh, if I can, I'm going to go ahead and put these up in an image so they're both together. And uh, if it's legible, I'll throw that up there. Otherwise, uh, throughout this piece of the video, uh, I'll put mine up and William's up so you guys can see. But I hope you found that interesting. I still, uh, this just confirms my, my logic of I want to get these uh, substances, these sediments, this extra wear material out of the oil, out of the engine's bloodstream as soon as possible. And uh, like I said, I, I knew what we were doing as far as getting these out, but to have some data to back that up is, uh, is, also, is interesting and, and informative. So I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And while I finish this beer, I'll say goodbye to you guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.